Travis Middle School English Language Arts and Reading presents Heartbeat by David Yu. Read by Miss Vega. Background. Born in 1974, David Yu has often felt like an outsider. While attending an international school in Korea, he was the only Korean American student among German and Saudi Arabian classmates. When his family moved to Connecticut, he again encountered few Asian peers. He published his first book, Girls for Breakfast, when he was 29. The book is a humorous account of a Korean American teenage hero's efforts to fit in at a suburban American high school. My nickname's Heartbeat because my friends swear that you can actually see the pulse on my bare chest. I've always been skinny. Everyone assumes I'm a weakling because I'm so thin. I prefer lean and mean or wiry, despite being a three-sport athlete. I decided to do something about it this fall when Sarah, the girl I have a crush on, said, Oh my gosh, you are so skinny. She was visibly repulsed by my sunken chest as I stepped off the soccer bus after practice. I silently vowed to do everything within my power to become the quote-unquote after picture. I was 16 years old, but I looked like I was 11. For the rest of the fall, I did countless push-ups and curled free weights until I couldn't bend my arms. I got ridiculously strong and defined, but I wasn't gaining weight. I wanted to be thicker. I didn't care about getting stronger if nobody could tell. I did research and started lifting heavier weights at lower reps and supplemented my meals with weight gainer shakes, egg whites, boiled yams, and tubs of cottage cheese. I forced myself to swallow these daily caloric intake equivalent of three overweight men and still wasn't able to increase my mass. I have a ridiculously fast metabolism. Over Christmas break, I cut out all useless movement, like ping pong and staircases, because I'm like a sev. The 83 calories in a mini Snickers bar is moot because I waste 90 chewing it. I returned to school in January depressed because I was still heartbeat in everyone's eyes. I constantly weighed myself. At least once an hour, no matter where I was, I'd find a bathroom so I could take off my shirt and flex in the mirror for a couple of minutes. I was so frustrated that nothing was working, but the frustration didn't last. I was sitting in study hall two weeks ago when Sarah said the magic words, have you been working out, Dave? You look bigger. I couldn't tell if she was being sarcastic. I went home and inspected myself in the mirror. I did look bigger, but then I'd realized the reason. I'd accidentally worn two t-shirts under my rugby shirt that day. It was just an illusion. I was futilely stuffing my face and religiously pumping iron and failing to alter my appearance. And now I'd stumbled on the simplest solution to looking bigger. I felt like I was reborn. I went to school the next day wearing two t-shirts under my turtleneck. I felt solid. By the end of last week, I was wearing three t-shirts under my rugby shirt. This Monday, I tucked four t-shirts under my plaid button-down. It gave me traps that didn't exist. My Q-tip sized shoulders transformed into, into NBA grapefruit deltoids. I could tell my classmates suddenly regarded me differently. It was respect. Sarah gave me a look I'd never seen before, as if she felt safer around me. I was walking down the hallway at the end of the day and must have twisted awkwardly because suddenly my zipper literally exploded and all my t-shirts spilled out of my pants. Luckily, the hallway was empty and I was wearing a belt. I realized I had artificially outgrown my clothes. My button downs were so tight that a few seconds after jamming the extra layers into my pants, the pressure would suddenly bunch up the cloth in random places so it looked like I had a goiter on my shoulder or something. I complained to my parents over dinner last night. I don't fit into anything anymore, I said. It reflects poorly on you guys. You could get arrested. What are you talking about? You look the same as always. You're still my little boy, my dad replied, pulling me into a headlock and giving me a noogie. I glared at him. I need a new ski, ski jacket, I said. It was true. I could barely clap my hands with all the layers I was wearing. 
I was getting out of control at this point. The four t-shirts under my wool sweater were smushing my lungs together like a male girdle. It was a small price to pay. Nobody called me heartbeat anymore, I reminded myself. After dinner, I went to a party. Even though it was winter, I opted to hang out on the back porch as much as possible because it was so hot inside. Being indoors was like a sauna, but Sarah was in the basement, so I headed that way. We were talking, and she noticed that I was dripping with perspiration. You're trembling, she said, touching my shoulder. She thought I was nervous talking to her and probably thought it was cute, but in reality, I was on the verge of passing out because I was wearing four tight t-shirts and two long sleeves under my wool sweater, not to mention the sweatpants tucked into my tube socks to add heft to my former chicken leg squads. She squeezed my biceps. Jeez, Dave, how many layers are you wearing? I couldn't even feel her squeezing them. I have to go, I said, excusing myself to another corner of the basement. Everyone was smushed together. It was so hot. Everyone except me was hanging out in t-shirts and tank tops. I was sopping and delirious and felt claustrophobic. My chest was cold because I had four drenched t-shirts underneath my sweater. It looked like I was breaking out with Ebola or something. When I coughed, people turned away from me in fear. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! I had no choice but to take some layers off. I lurched to the bathroom. My arms were ponderously heavy as I pulled off the sweater. Just lifting my arms exhausted me, and I had to stop midway and take a rest by sitting on the edge of the tub, gasping. Oh, I slowly peeled off the layers, one at a time. I took off my pants, peeled off my sweatpants too, down to my undies. I dried myself off with washcloth. My red tie-dye shirt had bled onto three white tees because of the sweat, so now they were faded pink tie-dyes. I hoisted the bundle of clothes and was shocked at the weight. I jammed them into the closet. I'd retrieve them later before I left. I put my sweater back on without anything underneath. After two weeks of constricting my air supply in range of motion by wearing upwards of six layers, I was amazed at how much freedom I had with my arms. I felt like I was dancing for the first time in my life. I suddenly realized what I really looked like at this party, a padded, miserable, and frustrated puffball burning up in all my layers. All this because I hated my nickname? I got home and realized I'd left my bundle of wet clothes back at the party. I took this as a sign. My day of wearing extra layers was officially over. Had Sarah fallen for the padded me, she'd be falling for someone else. Besides, winter wasn't going to last forever, and I couldn't just revert back to wearing just one set of clothes like a normal human being come spring. The change in my outward appearance would be the equivalent of a sheared sheep. From now on, I was just going to be me. That last night, I'm not disgustingly thin, I constantly reminded myself. I'm wiry, I'm lean and mean. Outside, it's snowing again. There's a party tonight, and my friends are on their way to pick me up. I don't know what to wear, so I lay four different outfits on the floor as if they're chalk outlines of people. A car horn honks 10 minutes later, and I still haven't decided on an outfit. Maybe I'll just wear them all. <laughs>